chair because the way that it works according to council rules is that the person with the most seniority on the council um, is the chair until the chair is elected. Um, I would like to, it's, this is the July 8th meeting of the City Council Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction, our first meeting, our meeting voyage. Um, and I'd like to announce that we are video recording this meeting with sound. And we will start by introducing ourselves. And then we will move on to nominations and a vote for a chair and vice chair. Let's start with you. Thank you. I'm Alan C. Walton, city solicitor for the city of Cambridge. I'm here uh, for the meeting discussion. I'm Cynthia Swobis, and um, I represent the Board of Health. Do you prefer being called Cynthia? Oh, Cindy's Cindy? fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Lisa Klein. I'm the city councilor for Ward 7. I am Jim Nash, and I am the city councilor for Ward 3. I'm Adele Franks, and I am a concerned citizen. And we are missing one member today. She wasn't able to be here, um, Kate Simmons. Uh, she says she will do everything she can to be at our next meeting. Um, and we'll n I will now accept nominations for chair of this committee. I have one. I'd like to nominate Adele Franks to be the chair of the committee. We need a second on that. I'll second it. <laughs> uh, I have a question. According to my reading of open, the open meeting law, um, the group can't meet without, well, in particular, the group couldn't meet um, remotely, but then no one could call in remotely unless there is a um, quorum physically present and the chair is physically present. So, if that is the case, then I might not be in town when there is a meeting. I could not serve as chair. And that's why we have a vice. We would have a vice chair mm -hmm. that would take over your duties. Um, we also, as a count, although we have that in our rules, we haven't done remote. I think the Human Rights Commission once tried to um, Skype somebody into a meeting, and it wasn't successful because of all kinds of tech issues. Do you know of any precedence of us actually doing a remote participation? No, I don't. Never, I've never participated in a remote uh, participation by a committee member. Uh, so I think that's a, a remote possibility of a public vice chair as long as it's No pun intended. <laughs> well, that, yeah, uh, um, okay, I, I, uh, when we get into the open meeting law, well, I'd like to revisit that question of the remote participation, but that's not relevant to the current discussion. So. Any other nominations for chair? So How about Kate? <laughs> she's not here. Isn't that, isn't that the rule? If you don't show up, you get elected to <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do that. <laughs> All right, so... Um, discussion? Oh, I think we kind of do discussion. Any, uh, any discussion on this nomination? I think Adele would be terrific. And, um, and I think we can figure out how to work around um, conflicts in hers and other schedules. So. All right, any other discussion? We'll talk about it after. Okay, um, so let's do a vote. Um, everyone in favor of Adele as chair, please say aye. 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 Um, one abstention. Oh, and Jim, thank, very thankfully, has agreed to take notes from this meeting, by the way. Oh, great. Uh, so one abstention, three eyes. Uh, Adele has been elected as chair of the committee. So, Adele, do you want to come sit here? Good. You can sit right here. And you have to do the process for electing a vice chairman. Okay. All right, we 
the, we are now open for uh, nominations for vice chair. Anyone have a nomination? Second. Second. Sorry, that's your business. <laughs> 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 Remind, just poke me. Um, okay. Um, uh, discussion. Well, I can say that I've known Cynthia for many years, and she is extraordinarily bright and competent, and I think she will make a fine vice chair. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We have three in favor, one abstention. Um, thank you for your confidence. <laughs> We're going to make a great team. I, I can tell already. <laughs> uh, okay, so. The next on the agenda is a discussion and a decision regarding note taking and clerk duties. Does that mean we are not going to have an official clerk? Well, um, that is true, and we uh, requested a member that would be um, appointed as clerk, and the city council president um, felt otherwise. We won't be able to use city staff either. So essentially, what it means is that we. Um, we have two options, I think, that somebody is willing to volunteer to be the clerk for every meeting, or we uh, do it on a rotating basis. Uh -huh. But those are really our only options. We do have the video recording, but we should also be doing at least a, a you know, broad agenda, uh, broad uh, minutes. Yes, I, I agree, we need minutes. Um, okay, well, <coughs> Is anyone willing to take on the responsibility of being the uh, taking minutes at every meeting and being our volunteer clerk? Um, I, I'd be happy to take the minutes if um, maybe we could share the scheduling of the meetings. Mm -hmm. It says here minutes slash scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, that works. And I'm willing to do the scheduling of the meetings. Because um, basically, I, I mean, I think what we have to do today is come up with, you know, like the second Tuesday of every month, or mm -hmm. we have to decide if we want to meet twice a month or once a month. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the um, the logistics of it, it's really easy for me. That's one thing that Laura, the city council um, administrative assistant, has agreed to do is to actually reserve the room for us and get it onto the city ske the schedule, um, so I can talk to her when we have that in place. So if you're really willing to do that. Well, really going, yeah, we'll give it a shot. That's great. Thank you. Okay. As long as Councilor Nash is doing it today, yep. I will follow your lead. I, and I want to thank you that I told Elisa I hate doing this. But um, but I'm willing to do it for today. So thank you. I figured this was a good day to take my turn. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> So is there an official format that we use? Uh, I assume we're going to be posting these minutes online. Uh, will you be putting them in whatever format we should be? I'm going to be using? following the, the okay. agenda, and um, I'll use this as my outline, and I will add in um, notes on our discussion and our decisions into this. Thank you. And then you, you submitted to someone to put on I'll, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with Laura to you know, just to, for her advice on format and um, and maybe we could set up for the three of us to do that okay. and then um, and then uh, before posting I think we need to approve the minutes and then um, and I'm sure Laura can help us. I would just suggest that on um, if you end up chairing a meeting as the vice chair, I think it's really hard to chair a meeting and also take minutes. And um, so I think we have to delegate that to somebody at the meeting if okay. you're chairing because Adele isn't here. Okay. So it's a super generous offer to be able to make, but it, it would just I think it would be hard to do that double duty. All right, so we'll move 
moving along to public comment. There's no more we have to skip. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, we're going to back up. Scheduling meetings. Um, in part, that I think that's related to the deadline and when we were producing the report. Are we um, still operating on a, um, a deadline of the end, by the end of the calendar year? No, we have um, five months from today, the first meeting, to submit a report to the city council. December 8th. Well, in that case, I would suggest that we need to meet twice a month. That's a very short time frame. What do other people think? Uh, is our, um, we're charged with making recommendations. That's basically it, right? So, um, so I'm just thinking about how we're, we're not charged with implementing or anything like that. Well, that's a very, I think that would be a nice thing for us to clarify before we even talk about scheduling the students or as we're sitting here, I'm thinking I actually developed this agenda, but I think it almost makes sense for us to um, put the schedule towards the end of our meeting because I think we have to talk about what our ICE report's going to look like and what the tasks are because we might also find that we're tasked with things that we each go off and do and that, you know, if we're responsible for our tasks, we spend a month doing them that we only have to actually convene once a month to talk about, you know, where we've gotten in our work. Right. And so it might not bring a lot of benefit to come twice a month. But I don't think we'll know that until we clarify how we're shaping the, um, the work. Yeah. So maybe we can table that or postpone it till a little yeah. bit later in the meeting. Okay, so actually right now it's um, uh, number, item number seven on the agenda, but we're going to move that to after number 10. Oh, we go scheduling the meetings. Yeah, it's a different thing. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, that's all right. So, um, so we're going to add that after item 10. And, uh, and so we'll have a more full discussion of whether we need twice a month or once a month. Is it okay to move on to public comment? Members of the public, do you have any comments about that? I Good morning. Uh, I'm Chris Hellman. I reside at 625 West Hampton Road in Florence. I'm actually here today in my capacity as a member of the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, the reason I'm here is that um, on occasion over the last four years we've been approached by uh, potential grantees who have been looking at the use of herbicides for control of invasive species on, on city land. Um, by and large, we've been receptive to that, but um, we feel, and I can't speak for the committee, but as a member of the committee, I feel it would be useful for us. There have been a couple of places in time where um, a lack of clarity about what's appropriate use of herbicides on, on city land has, has sort of stymied our ability to make decisions on the granting. So um, my feeling is, is that if we have, and I realize that pesticides and herbicides are different, um, but that, um, because this is about invasive plant species as opposed necessarily to insects. Uh, but either way, um, that some sort of um, uniform guidance as to the, uh, addressing the use of um, pesticides, herbicides, on city land will help us to review um, future grants, which we know we're going we're to be saying. So um, I just wanted to bring that up. I commend you guys for volunteering your time on this. I think it's an important issue for us, and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing whatever recommendations. Thank you. Yes, uh, I, I, I would like to just point out that the term pesticide has been broadened to include herbicides. I wasn't sure on that, and I, yeah. I kind of figured that right. even, if, even if it wasn't, any sort of guidelines that you give us are going are gonna, to are gonna transfer pretty easily. But that uh, any sort of clarity about comprehensive citywide sort of set of guidelines would be, would be very useful. So, Did you have some? No, that was exactly what I was 
Yeah, it's, it's very confusing that now uh, the term pesticide is more broad. Thank you. Can I get your address? Oh, yeah, 625 West Hampton Road in Florence. Thank you. And, Thank you. And Chris, one other, in, in the committee you're part of, it's... It's the Community Preservation Committee. And we do granting for yeah. a lot of things, but in, particularly in this regard, it has to do with um, open spaces and uh, recreational. So both, both of those, both of those are areas to look for. We get granting where this is come up. Thank you. Oh, did city... Yeah. Um, for instance, conservation land. Okay. Um, one of the groups that's been really active in this is the Broadford Coalition that that, man, that sort of manages the Fitzgerald Lake area and some other areas, and they they do a really aggressive uh, anti-invasive campaign and come to us for a, a couple of occasions. Uh, the most recent occasion when this bubbled up had to do with eradication of invasives up at the uh, uh, the hospital um, community garden. Um, and that was one where we were unable to reach a decision on the grant proposal because there was a lack of clarity within the organization itself as to how they were going to approach the use of herbicides on that land. Uh, and we, we felt it was inappropriate for us to be adjudicators of that issue, um, but we sensed at that moment that it would be useful to have some sort of city guidelines on, on how it was going to be. So those are the two main, it's the conservation lands. Um, I can see it coming up on watershed lands uh, as well where it's a very hot button issue and where I knew it came up on a couple of occasions when I was serving on the Board of Public Works. Um, so these are all these are all areas where I think it's gonna be helpful for not just not just uh, you know the city but but organizations that work in and around the city on, on public lands as happened before. Anything else? Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank My name is Nancy Schroeder. I'm from Hammers. Um, I'm here to, we're several steps behind you folks. I'm here to learn. So, uh, that's it. Thank you, Pat. I'm moving along to uh, the city solicitor. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> I want to begin just by speaking generally about the open meeting law. The open meeting law is intended uh, to uh, effectuate transparency in government. The, uh, your constituents have a right to observe your decision-making process. So anytime this can work, this committee, or any subcommittee created by this committee uh, is meeting, there are certain requirements that precede that meeting and certain requirements during the meeting. So <coughs> preceding the meeting, there must be at least 48 hours posting of an agenda an agenda that sets forth each item that's going to be taken up at the meeting with sufficient detail so that someone reading the agenda will have a good idea of the subject matter that you're going to discuss. It doesn't really signal in any way what the decision is going to be, just what the subject matter of your discussion is going to be. Um, you must meet in open session unless you meet one of the uh, executive se uh, session exemptions which are set forth in the law. I don't foresee you needing to have executive sessions uh, in this committee. Uh, I suppose it's theoretically possible, but before you do, I th it would be a good idea to check in to make sure that it's a proper subject for executive session and that you, uh, as chair particularly, you have gone through the steps that are necessary to open a public meeting and then to adjourn into private executive session. Um, during the meeting, the meeting is always chaired by the chair or if the chair is unavailable, the vice chair. Uh, if both of you are unavailable, uh, I, I believe it would be the highest ranking member of the, the council. Uh, so uh, Councilor Klein would be the chair. Uh, the quorum of this committee is three. Uh, there are ways that you can quote unquote meet without being all physically present in this room. <coughs> Meeting can occur by serial email. So uh, uh, member one emails number two, who emails number three, you're now a quorum, you have just violated the open meeting law. You cannot do your business by email 
uh, uh, a quorum if you cannot do your business by email. The things you can do by email are scheduling meetings, sending out documents that you would want the other members to have before the meeting because it's going to be discussed at the meeting, uh, and uh, those kinds of administrative details. If you have a question about those administrative details, do not reply all. And I would ask the chair, when sending out these kinds of documents, remind people, do not reply all. Because when you reply all, you have just violated the open meeting law, if it's a substantive issue with what was uh, provided. During the meeting, someone has to keep minutes. And we have a, a clerk designated. Uh, the issue came up about what goes in the minutes. These are not a verbatim transcript. So let me tell you what needs to go into the minutes. And if you need this in writing, I'll be happy to send it to you. The date, time, and place of the meeting. The members present or absent. The decisions made and actions taken, including a record of all votes. A summary of this discussions on each subject. A summary. You don't need to know exactly who said exactly what, just a summary of what was discussed. A list of all documents and exhibits used at the meeting. Okay. Those are part of the minutes, those are part of the record of the meeting, and they must be retained. Uh, and the name of any member who participated in the meeting remotely. Now, uh, let me address your concerns with remote participation. Yes, the chair has to be there, but if the chair is not there, the vice chair will suffice to chair the meeting even if there's a remote participant. Because you don't have to worry about you not being here and not being able to have remote participation. Now, it, it, it sounded to me from the regs that a decision needs to be made about whether remote participation is allowed. And I couldn't tell if it was a municipal decision or a I, community decision. I believe that it's a, a city council, uh, it's a citywide decision to adopt this as part of the law. Mm -hmm. so, and the decision has been made to do so, that's right. but we just have not actually okay. made it happen. Okay, right. well, that's helpful. So, so. Uh, and uh, you know, all of your meetings are open to the public, all of your agendas are public, all of your minutes are public. Executive session minutes, should you ever go into executive session, will become public once the reason for the executive session has passed. So, so every so often I meet with the chair, uh, the president of the city council, and we go through the executive session minutes, and then we determine which one is going to be made public. That's the general overview of the open meeting law. Again, do not have serial discussions. If you run into two people at, at the supermarket who are on this committee, talk about something else. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, in larger communities like this, uh, these discussions happen either at the supermarket or at the, at the landfill. Those are the typical <laughs> places where you run into people and you start talking about it. So if you two talk about it, and then one of you meets another person and talks about it, you've just violated the open meeting law. So keep your discussions to the meetings, please. If there is uh, uh, two or three of you are sent off to be a subcommittee to investigate something and report back to the full committee, uh, that subcommittee is equally subject to the open meeting law, and all of the things I just talked about about the open meeting law will apply equally to that subcommittee. A, per, uh, a single person could ever be a subcommittee. So a subcommittee has to post its meetings online as well? Uh, on the board, online, do exactly the same things as the whole committee does. I have a question about that. So if a subcommittee is two people, which is not a quorum, it still would need two. to be? Quorum is two. But a quorum is three for this committee. A quorum of that subcommittee is two. If you appoint two people as a as a subcommittee. Oh, so that becomes its own, as it were, committee that you have to think about. Oh, right. And that committee can then report back to, to the, the, the whole committee. Two other things that uh, that I that aren't open meeting related, I just want to put into your mind. Okay? Your emails, if you're using a private email, understand that the emails are public. Your emails among you know, your members 
They are, they are documents that are made or received by a public official, uh, and they are public records. You must retain them. You cannot delete the emails that you send to each other in this committee. Uh, some public officials in, in similar situations will create a new email just for this, because you don't want, if there's ever anything come up, you want investigators rooting through your email to see what's in your email. Um, so you might think about that. I mean, I don't think it's pressing here, but you might think about that. Um, your emails among, between each other, other members, and among uh, this, this committee are all public records. So be, be mindful of that and make sure you retain them because you cannot destroy public records without an order of the secretary. So, second thing I want you to think about is conflict of interest. If ever you find yourself thinking, well, this isn't going to be good for my daughter or son or father or, or cousin, or if you have any interest other than the municipality coming into your mind, <laughs> stop. You have the right to an opinion from either the State Ethics Commission or from me as to conflicts of interest. Now, you've been designated as special municipal employees. It gives you more leeway uh, to, to, to have other interests, but I want you to be really mindful of you or your family holding positions with the city, holding contracts with the city, having financial interests in whatever you're working on. So um, if you have, if you are the owner of a company that is in place to replace Roundup, in our world, you may have a conflict here. So just think about any financial interest that you may have. Last thing, those are actual conflicts. There's also the appearance of conflict. If your best friend comes and, and wants something from this committee, you need to disclose that this is your best friend. Anything that a person knowing the circumstances can believe that the person asking you for something would either get your favor or your disfavor because of who they are, stop. Okay. It's easily remedied, but just stop. If any of those things happen, just stop and call me, please. I don't want anybody getting into trouble. And the State Ethics Commission is nothing but trouble. When they come to investigate, they're not investigating because they got you out of the phone book. Because, you know, somebody's made a complaint about, uh, about a conflict. So just be mindful of it. I don't expect it to happen on this committee. Just be mindful of any potential conflicts of interest, financial for you or your family, or that perception that somebody might enjoy your favor or your disfavor uh, because of who they are. That's my... So if we have an issue that we um, think could pertain to this last concern of perception, should we mention it now or should, should we contact you in the future? Depends on what it is. Okay? There are... Um, you have you have an appointing authority, you will have to disclose your uh, your conflict to the appointing authority, which is the president of the city council, and you should also disclose it at the meeting. Uh, oh, this meeting. Whatever meeting you're going to take up a matter in which you have an appearance of conflict. Okay, well, I have a general issue with, with the topic of this select committee that I think I, I just need to make public. It's probably already known by the public, but I think I should. I don't know it, so. Which is that um, I'm a co founder of Rosie Northampton, who purchased 120 acres of farmland, which is being managed organically, and we are right next to the Florence Fields. And there was a huge public outcry when the city wanted to spray uh, herbicide on that field, and we opposed that publicly. And um, so I have, I have been on record uh, in the past as opposing the use herbicide on public land, and uh, I just want to disclose that. So I don't think it's an issue that you have a position on this, and you have made your position public. If anything about grow food specifically is going to come up, you should, that's when you need to contact me and we need to figure out. Because are, are you, uh, it's a non-profit, I assume. Nonprofit. Are you a, 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 a uh, new director? I was a director for nine years. I just rolled off the board in April. Okay, so you're not a director. It's not a for-profit corporation, so you don't own shares. Uh, 
no financial benefit. There's no financial benefit to you, but if, if there is something that affects grow food, one, knowing the situation, might think that grow food might get a better shape from you because you found it's your baby and, you know, so that needs to be disclosed. If anything comes up about grow food, I'd appreciate you contacting me. We'll work through it together. It's nothing we can't work through. Okay. That's my spiel. Any other questions? Just a, um, two questions. Can I um, email one member of this committee and have a back and forth? Yes, you can, unless you're a subcommittee. Uh, on any subject. On any subject. If that person then contacts a third person, okay. you violate a the deal. And then if somebody, someone on the committee sends all of us this great website, Amherst or just another mm -hmm. website, and um, can I reply all to that website saying, this is great, here's another website? Or do I have to just reply to the person who sent it? I would not reply to all. If you want, uh, I would. The problem with, with what you said is that's great, should not be part of it. If you want to send around another website for people to look at, just send the link to the website. That's it. No commentary. Okay. okay. Although, I mean, that's, that's a pretty conservative way to respond, I think, to that question, just because if we're not voting on anything, there's no decision making regarding the website, it's just a resource to comment that it's a good resource, I don't think has any open meeting law implications. I'd avoid that. I'd avoid any commentary about anything. I mean, save it for the meeting. What, what's added to the to the conversation by emailing your your impression of what was sent to you? You're now in you're now discussing this and I, I would just be I'd be conservative. There's no reason not to be conservative in this area. It, it doesn't advance this, this committee's uh, work at all, and it can be said in, in public and have even more impact because everybody in the audience is going to hear it, everybody watching the TV is going to hear it. And that's the purpose of the open meeting. I have a, a, a couple of other questions. One is in the open meeting law materials said that, that each committee can make a decision about uh, public comment during meetings. So it sounds like we can make a decision about whether we're going to allow public comment. But my question is, let's say, but can, is there a middle ground? Can you say, yes, we'll allow public comment for the first 10 minutes of the meeting? Um, rather than, you know, I mean, at some city council meetings, public comment goes on for an hour or more. And, um, I haven't read the council see. rules about whether they, the council requires public comment. I know that the mayor does in, in for executive um, committees, requires public comment. Uh, you can structure public comment any way you want to. Um, once you open it up as public comment, it's a First Amendment forum. You're really not going to be able to not do it or limit what people say. Typically, uh, uh, this is handled by limiting the amount of time that each person gets to speak. Uh, the problem is that if you set a fixed time limit and you have all of the anti-roundup people lined up to speak and then the pro-roundup people never get to speak or whatever the, the issue is, um, could be a perception or it could actually be a First Amendment violation. So I would be your, uh, I would prefer to see you limit the time. Um, I, Each person's time. Right. I mean, and it doesn't have to be much. Two minutes. Plenty of time to speak. Plenty of time. We also have the option, I think, if we have, if we want to do a community forum, per se, we can create a community forum separate from our meetings, and then we can have people on that will provide them with more time if we have a particular subject. or So that's another option. It's a great idea. Well, you also can um, see what uh, the Charter Review Committee has done. They pick out certain issues, like election issues, and they had a forum on election issues. And so, you know, the 16-year-old the vote people came, the you know, ranked choice voting people came, you know, so we had subjects that we had, uh, they, they, they had uh, a forum on different subjects. So. The other thing, too, that we can talk about uh, if we want to is uh, the council, as you know, is very strict about having people come up at the very beginning of the meeting 
each person has three minutes. We don't respond to people um, who are providing public comment. But many of the committees and commissions will have a much more kind of loose forum where um, people can ask questions from the podium and we can respond, we can engage with them. So that's something we want to about too. And the other thing I've seen in some committees and commissions is people from the, uh, from the public will kind of step in in the middle of the meeting where if they have something that they feel like pertains to the subject that's being discussed, so it's not during a public comment period. So those are all things that we can think about in terms of what we want our uh, format to look like. And that's fine as long as all content neutral. So you're not, you know, setting the stage for this camp to speak or not. It has to be open to all people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Two quick questions, well, maybe not so quick. So in terms of uh, the subcommittee, I mean, so one of the ideas I had was that, um, that, so for example, exploring what other cities and towns are doing around pesticide reduction, and maybe different committee members partnering up to like go to a, on a trip to, let's say, Concord Mass, talk to somebody, um, and, and gather information. How does that relate to, I mean, if we're operating in that manner, that sounds like it might be a violation of open meeting law if we're actually, you know, if two people are going together on a particular topic. Could be. I mean, I, I'd have to think about that. Uh, There's an exception in the, in the, the rules here about um, project site visits. Site visits, yes. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that could fall under a site visit. Right, but, but, but if you're a subcommittee, I mean, if, the, if the entire committee is going on a site visit, fine. Um, what, what the committee can't do is get in the car, the five of you, and have a, a discussion about what you just saw. And that's the concern. It's not actually seeing what you saw, but <laughs> it's sitting like you know, going out to Concord and then sitting in the car for two hours discussing what you just saw, that's the open meeting violation. <laughs> That would be an interesting ride back. Yeah. Yes. So, what would your advice be to around handling something like that? Can we all take separate cards, like the old Red Sox, or you know, or um... it's always politics. You know, it's always politics. Like that. No, that's that's the concern. What the answer is not to discuss in a subcommittee or send individuals out to different places. Individuals are in subcommittees. So, so that might be the answer then is to rather than create little micro subcommittees that we all work individually and work with. Well, I, I, I think that um, the fact that we have a very a much smaller committee than um, Councillor Nash and I had initially envisioned is a benefit in that sense. We had thought we would have an up to 10 person committee, in which case we'd have two people working on each of the, the tasks that we've outlined here. Um, and then we probably would have gotten into a little bit more hot water. So we're in a position where we have a total of five members with more than five tasks. So each of us is going to have a task. So I think we're 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 kind of you know sidestepping that problem because of the way the committee has been formed. So if two of two of us went to visit a site, mm -hmm. on the way back we wouldn't discuss what we saw. We would report back to the committee. That. Even that's, even if the two of us are not a sub an official subcommittee. But that, that's the issue. Are you a subcommittee or are you just yeah. two members, a, a non quorum of the larger committee? Right. And I think it's uh, that's an interesting question. So we, we will figure that out. We'll, okay. we'll figure out a way for you to get out to other sites if that's what we want to do and make site visits. Uh, Thank you. Did you have another question? Yeah, just one other. Um, so, just to be clear, meeting remotely at this time is not allowed. That's allowed. It's allowed. It's allowed. It's allowed. It's allowed. As long as there's a physical quorum present in, this, in a room, yes, then, then a okay. number of other members, I guess up to two members of the committee, could be remote. True. Sure. Remotely participating. And we, have, we would have to work out the technical challenges. The other side of that is, what if we had um, 
either an expert who wanted to hear from or a member of the public who wanted to address us, but they couldn't be present in the room, could they be remote? That's totally up to the committee. That has nothing to do with the open meeting law because uh, you're in open session. And so you, I, the public's hearing what you're hearing, so that's pretty that satisfied with the open meeting Okay. Thank you. Did you have any other? No, I think I got it. Thank you for uh, you your service. Down. Let me know if you need anything else. I'm right over there. <laughs> right next door. Uh, you know we will. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to review the, re the actual resolution that established this select committee on pesticide reduction. Okay. 
so we've got to get that up here because this reads that we have to get the report to the city council by October first, which is no longer true. I will take care of that. Okie dokie. So um, I'll just make one more comment and give the floor back to you, Adele. If you look at the um, <clears throat> the agenda for today, the agenda essentially links up exactly to this list that I just read of what the committee shall study and evaluate. So A, B, C, D, E um, are all in our agenda um, under process and task number nine, pro process and tasks, topics to cover. So that's really, um, now that we've kind of seen that those were mandated to us as our tasks by the, the resolution establishing the committee, um, I think we can talk about the actual uh, labor involved. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so that as, as listed in the agenda, we have a number of bullet points that may be covered by these other bullet points, but they don't exactly correspond. They respond, correspond pretty clearly. I mean, there are extra ones like the vision, the overall vision, and things like that. But effects of pesticide use, current management, um, policies and practices from other municipalities, estimated costs, potential grant programs, that's all directly from the resolution. Really? Okay. Yes. Uh, as we go through these, rather than bullets, I'm going to be assigning uh, letters to these just so it's easier to follow. So if you're referring to this, you know, which bullet, give me a, a letter. It'll be helpful for me. Uh, I'm hoping okay. we're going to go through in order, but just. Okay. Um, well, it seems to me that uh, it would be a challenging to go in order because we may not be able to speak to what our what we want to see this final report look like until we've talked about uh, what, what exactly it's going to consist of. Sure. Um, does that make sense to the rest of us? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it, I, I would like to, to first talk about current management, which is currently the fourth bullet. Because we, we can't do anything, uh, it seems to me, um, that we can't do anything until we talk about what's happening. Well, what is our baseline? Where are we starting from? So, um, so be your age in that would be 9A, would be current management of municipal green mm -hmm. spaces. <clears throat> so, uh, I would just like to open up with, what do we know about our current management? Do we have baseline information? If not, how are we going to get it? Clear. So we're now going to call current management A? Yes. Okay, got it. Um, we don't have information in any organized form. We have different people in the city overseeing each of these things. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where it goes back to the second bullet point, which is um, we can either, I think we have two options. We can invite we have to do everything through the mayor's office because the mayor is the boss of the city departments. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk to the mayor and ask if we, he will issue our invitation to particular staff members that oversee um, particular places. Um, we can assign members to have do interviews or just go and meet with people. That's another option. And then the only other thing I want to say is it's not just staff members. Um, as uh, Chris Hellman is here from the CPC, as an example, we also have uh, commission members and chairs that we should probably think about talking to as well. So it's staff, but it's also potentially uh, committee or commission members like the Ad Commission, uh, the CPC. Um, so we should think about that as well. And that that will give us information too about how often we might want to meet because if we're going to be inviting people to come and talk to us, we have to um, have more time for that. But I, I mean, I think the most 
personally, my feeling is, is that the most effective way of doing this would be to actually just assign members of the group to do a piece of research and bring it back to the committee. It's my feeling about it, but I'm sure there are other opinions. Um, I think it might be also intimidating uh, for a city staff person to come before us as an organized body, whereas I mean, the conversation might be a little bit less intimidating. Um, so I guess I would, I would go, um, I would be inclined in that direction. Um, but I also think that um, it would be helpful to have more than one person doing each interview because it's often very helpful to have a second person who has maybe, maybe hear something more than the first person has who might think of a question to ask. So, uh, but with going back to open meeting law, um, we could designate two members to interview each person, but that doesn't need to be a it doesn't need to be a subject. Other comments? I'm just I'm just wondering. Um, two two departments come to mind: Board of Health and Nurse Ways, and DPW and Nurse Ways. Are there any narrowness planning? Well, it, I, I would add on to people that we want to hear from are the, uh, the the people could be like Broadbrook, it could be there's uh, individual farmers who will uh, lease property. Uh, there's so there's a lot of private groups also involved with the management of city conservation land, um, and we probably want to hear from them as well. They're working in, often working in conjunction with with the planning department around what they can do and not do, and so. Uh, but there's other people doing things, and I think that I mean what uh, Chris was speaking to is they, you know, you, that um, the uh, Broadbrook would probably like some guidance on this as well. As I, I, I know some of the other conservation groups that are overseeing these properties. I guess I was coming from the perspective of the current practices mm -hmm. from the city, mm -hmm. which is what we control, control to some extent. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, I just keep going to DPW, I guess planning has something to do with this. Um, the other folks that are going to contact them and feed off of their input, definitely. But I'm just wondering how we get the lay of the land to see what we're doing in the city right now. I don't have a handle. Uh, mm -hmm. I could conjecture what's going on. But um, I, I'm just wondering, is that a place to start? You yeah. know, that broadens us to these other groups that you were mentioning, Councilor. Um, <clears throat> so just a recommendation. I mean, I, uh, um, I had already tried to make an appointment with Mayor charge of the health department just to sit down and be educated. But this comes from a different uh, thinking through this. Should that happen? Should she come here? Something DPW? Should they have the same questions? That we're going to, you know. And just to note that everything has to go through the mayor's office yes. too. Yeah. So even even though you have that relationship directly yeah. with Meredith, we have to uh, and that's probably something the chair and the co-chair can kind of uh, be the funnel for. We have to define who we need to talk to, and then the, invitate, the request has to be submitted to the mayor's office, and then they'll decide who from those departments will speak to us. So, uh, the planning department oversees the conservation commission, is that correct? So we would start with planning. So as I, what I'm hearing is that there are three city departments that we would be asking the mayor for assistance in uh, contact. That, or are there more? Can anyone? Well, or, yeah, that, that, or well, are there look more? Let's look at the list. Mm -hmm. Conservation, you just said, is planning. Mm -hmm. uh, watershed would be DPW, the water department. Specifically, farmland is um, <coughs> the ag commissions. It's, it's it's a state appointed 
commission, if I'm not mistaken, and they're their own thing, and I'm not sure if they sit technically under a city department. Do you know, Jim, or does anyone know? Um, I always assumed they were they're a, a city board or a committee. So. No, the Ag Commission, I think, has a particular status. We have a couple okay. of those, like <clears throat> the Housing Authority and right. the Ag Commission. I'm pretty sure, I could be mistaken on that, but we can ask the Mayor's Office about that. Um, gardens, parks, playing fields, all DPW, cemeteries, DPW, sidewalks and tree belts, DPW, general highway and public works, DPW. And what are the places that you, um, you're under the impression the health, the health department oversees? Um, uh, So that, that seems to be the three. So the DPW is overseas schools, school yards as well? Schools is actually complicated. We, we, the, count, the city council doesn't have any jurisdiction over what the schools does with school property. It's the uh, school board. And we can't, we can't mandate that they change anything. So the schools essentially is left out of this. Um, I don't know. I mean, Board of Health can mandate school property. Because it has that unique kind of power, so I don't know. For instance, we, we mandated no smoking. So for the fields, we should add the schools and the mosquito spraying is the board of health jurisdiction. I think, but I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> so I, it, um, I think if we spoke to central services, which also includes property like this as well as the school properties that we can we can have that discussion about these properties and maybe get some information on what goes on on school properties as well I, central services i don't i think they do internal building stuff i'm not sure they actually manage anything in terms of turf management outside of schools the DPW actually carries it out. So they cut the lawns, for example. Yeah, and they put on the pesticides on the playing fields that are adjacent to schools that are school playing fields. I don't, I think some okay. services is more about the internals of okay. the buildings. I, I could be wrong again, but I don't see any There's a custodian. <laughs> so these are all questions we have to get answers to. Yeah, so who does mow the school yards? I think it's DPW. DPW. Yeah. So I, I, um, I would like to question whether or not schools are really outside of our purview. Yeah. I think um, schools are very, very important issues. I think that's where children get exposed to these chemicals. The only problem is, is that we're submitting a report to so the city council, and the city council doesn't have mandate over. Mm -hmm what the school committee can decide. That's why it would be interesting to bring in this question around the Board of Health. This whole discussion is making me wonder if we shouldn't invite the mayor to our next meeting to get you know, clarity on these kinds of questions. It might be, I mean, he has such a breadth of knowledge of how all the working parts interact and don't interact that that might be the most useful way to just get answers to these kinds of questions. We would, I would be hoping that hopefully sooner rather than later. Right. So we are two weeks, not in another month, so that we can get That's a big open question then is, is the school committee or the school grounds under our curriculum? Just let me, just because I don't know how <laughs> the government works, but to me, this would be one of us going to somebody <laughs> over there that knows all this. As opposed to the mayor coming here, waiting to read this, you know? I don't even know who that person is, but somebody has to answer to these questions that we can you know, have. Well, we would submit, again, we'd say, you know, we want to talk to someone from the DPW and we want like to cover these things, we'd submit that request to the mayor, and the mayor would either have Donald Scalia, the director of the DPW, mm -hmm. kind of do the whole oversight piece where she might bring in some of her staff to meet with one of us. Mm -hmm. so and there may be departments that the mayor says, you know, no, I, I won't grant you a meeting, but you can do an email exchange. You can get this information by email. We don't even know if we'll be able to get these interviews in place. So 
so I'm not sure how it works. It seems clunky. <laughs> yeah. But that it, it might make sense also just so that the mayor has the opportunity to collaborate yeah. with us. Mm -hmm. We do this in a collaborative spirit, hopefully, yeah. that we invite him first before we I mean, does that seem to as mm -hmm. onerous? Yeah. Because he really is the only person that can mm -hmm. grant us access, as it were, to staff members. We can approach committees and commissions, but not staff members. I think that's a great idea to invite the mayor to the next meeting, to review with him, who, to have a discussion about how we can get this information from the city staff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, yes, it could be Director Lascalio comes here and speaks to all of the properties overseen by DPW, or maybe we start to break it down into cemeteries and parks mm -hmm. and all of that. But um, I think that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, we're looking not at the individual gardener or farmer who's putting Roundup on the farm. We're looking at only what the city. State the preemption city. laws. State preemption laws don't allow the city council to make any decisions about what can be used or what can't be used on private property, only on public, publicly owned, publicly managed property. That's the only jurisdiction we have here. The state is the only entity that can make decisions about what private property, how private property can be managed. Yes. However, as if the city is leasing farmland to a farmer, the city can tell that farmer that you know, the lease includes the perfect prohibition of using X chemicals on that land. Um, and the same, I would think, would be true of the um, public community garden. If the city said the gardeners are advised that we do not allow the use of X chemicals on the land, don't use them in your garden, that would be okay. Or city of those properties that are adjacent to those schools. You can't control them, but we can. Are you talking about private property? Yeah. We can certainly try to educate the whole population about the need to avoid certain chemicals in certain areas. Sure. But we can't um, require them. Yeah. Oh, so it sounds to me like um, we, do, we have some an areas of confusion that we'd like the mayor to clarify, and schools is the big, a big one. But for the other areas, we don't we don't have confusion. Could we go ahead and request that the mayor invite those departments to talk with us before? I mean, we can also at the same time invite the mayor to the next meeting to resolve some of these other issues, but. It's a rate limiting step for us to get started with these departments. Without a baseline, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to say very much. What, what's the, what do you all think about that? I think, it, yeah, two parallel processes probably is the most efficient. So maybe we should talk about, if we do do it that way, um, you know, who's going to cover which. And before we issue the invitation, it would ask the mayor to invite anybody. We would have to decide among ourselves what we're asking for. Are we asking for someone to address our whole select committee, or are we asking them to be interviewed by one of us? I feel like we have so many, yeah. Personally, I was thinking that it would be more, you know, people would be assigned to different, um, different ones. But don't forget, we also have to look into all these other things, so I also don't want us to, um, you know, I was actually imagining that just one person would find out all of the current management stuff, maybe two, and then another person would be looking at policies and practices from other municipalities, and then another person would be looking at um, costs and potential grant, something like that, because if we, mm, and, and do those as parallel processes. But I don't know, maybe that doesn't make sense now that we're talking this through. Well, I, I could see making an argument for either. I'm just anxious that we 
we don't delay um, talking to our city departments. Because um, we only have five months total, so. Um, do we have um, people who are particularly interested in speaking to uh, these departments? Shall we figure out who among us really want to do that? So, I, I, I appreciate the parallel approach being faster, but I, I think that by um, uh, waiting to meet with the mayor and then getting him on board with who it is we want to speak with, I think it's going to open more doors in terms of getting information that, um, that if we're inviting the mayor to get his advice on who to speak to and at the same time we're reaching out to speak to people, um, I think that he might feel a little put off but by why are you asking me when you've already done it. So um, um, I, I think that, you know, waiting on who we're going to contact, because he'll actually probably, once he agrees to something, he'll, he'll put it out to his staff that we'll be reaching out to schedule time to, to hear from people. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that delays things a little. But um, but that during in in Elisa can attest to this during our discussion on how to craft this resolution, we we were uh, also in discussion with the mayor and with the mayor there was um, there was some pushback around what is council business and where we can go with this and that um, that we need to work in conjunction with, with the mayor's office. It was, it, there was um, some pushback around delving into matters related to the school department, and that um, so um, we can during discussion we may end up going different places, but I think the place to start is to hear from the mayor. I mean, not not knowing about those sensitivities, I, you know, I defer to your you know your history with that doesn't mean we um, can't explore policies and other means. It right. doesn't mean we can't explore grant opportunities and all that stuff. I'm good with that. Yeah. Having the mayor to the next meeting. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that too as long as we doesn't get postponed for yeah. a very long time. We can do it in the next two or three weeks. I'm good with that. Sounds good to me. So we made a decision. We're not going to invite any. Uh, we're not going to ask the mayor to invite city department participation until we have actually had an opportunity to have the mayor come to our. And we won't meeting. initiate it as well. Or we won't initiate mm -hmm. it as well. We would certainly not initiate a conversation with any departments until the mayor has invited them. We just have to be mindful that not only do we only have five months, but we're trying to launch this in the summer on vacation yeah. and so it's it oh, may you be don't have any vacations do you? I actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to hear that. That's not exactly well, I do. We went for a few days in August, but that's all. Um, so it just it could be challenging. Yeah. You have to get the you know the mayor when right. uh quorum of our body can be I agree. You know, but I, I really support what Sandy's saying that I think we have to at least have parallel processes with some of these other tasks because if we just kind of wait until we do the current practices, we're going to really be stabbing ourselves in the foot over the expressions. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's too violent. I know. I'm sorry. So, okay, so we've made a decision about that. Um, and we'll, we'll have to circle back to scheduling when we, when we get to that issue. Um, so then let's move on to nine, I guess we're going to call it. B, policies and practices from other municipalities. Um, I have previously done some research on the subject. Um, uh, so I would be willing to uh, re-engage in that topic, but I'm interested to know who else is really interested. Because, um, I, first of all, I don't, I don't think any, I think it's, it should be one of us, only, solely one of us who takes on any of I've done a lot of looking into 
that too. So, you know, we, maybe we can work together on that one unless someone else desperately wants to. They're also really good, if you look at number 10, and we'll talk more about the resources broadly, but there are a few organizations, <coughs> both in Massachusetts and at the state, at the national level, mm -hmm. who have developed incredible databases, uh, databases of um, what different uh, states are doing, what different municipalities have done. Um, beyond Pesticide, not Beyond, to Toxics Action Center in Massachusetts is, that's their raison d'etre. They're doing incredible work and have a whole spreadsheet of what different municipalities throughout Massachusetts are in the process of doing, have done, or are attempting to do. Um, so we have some really good resources at hand. Are, are, are there, is there other interest? It's too bad Kate's not here because we don't know what her interests are. Does anyone know what Kate's interests are? I just know that she's a chemist. So she might be the right person to kind of cover the effects of pesticide use for that first thing. I mean, that stuff is very readily available at this point. And, you know, Young Pesticides is this national organization that just has done incredible documentation of Pesticide use, but that well, is her background. So, okay. so, um, so that would be 9C, pesticide, the effects of pesticide use. So we're going to say, um, yes, provisionally, <laughs> we're going to ask Kate if she would be willing to take that on. Is anyone else interested in working with her on that? If she agrees to do that. That one's a pretty simple one, just because there is so much material available. You should see it. Very people have other. Um, all right, all right. So then, back to back to nine B policies and practices from other municipalities. Are there uh, uh, Cynthia or Jim? Are you interested to work on that? Uh, it, for, for me personally, it's it's more of an issue than the financial piece, but it sounds like you, you have a lot of strength in that area. I'm more than happy to pull back from it if you're interested, and I can do the, um, the grants and costs thing if you would rather do that. But it seems like it does. You probably started the cases. Well, I started, but um, I'm happy to just pass it on the information. Um, I'm not sh sure if you were present when we gave you the information to the Why don't we, why don't we, um, but you were talking about having two people focusing on that now, so you and Cindy could work on it together. We could, or it could be um, uh, you and Cindy, and then I could work with, um, with Kate, um, and the best of us to use. Okay. Um, the women of us are especially interested in being with the departments to get the baseline. That's another major task that we should factor into the people. You are. Um, I'm also would like to throw in the mix. I'm teaching the math, so I'd like to poke around up there because the students are unbelievable things in this area. So I'd like to get a person who kind of knows which way this lady is. I think I have someone in mind. And um, I think it's okay for me to go off and to that person, or if they, if, again, it's a summary, but if they, if they have some kind of information, bring it back here and see if you want to make it as well. So that yeah. kind of fits into the policies and practices piece, right? We get more practices, I think, because they're teaching it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, who knows where that can be. But that's just an assignment. How do we do that? Yeah, this isn't, I mean, the bullet points that we have here are not necessarily, they do kind of correspond with what the tasks were as envisioned by the resolution, but I don't think they're, you know, they have to limit yeah. us if there's other useful stuff that we should or could be doing. Okay, so I'm, I'm just now thinking, maybe I'm, I'm going to make a list of each of us and then we can gather their interests so that we can 
That'll help me anyway. Um, what are your interests? You know, I would be interested in working on figuring out those baselines across the different departments. Okay. Um, I suspect we're going to see different things going on. And, um, and across these various domains, there's going to be different approaches. So, okay. so that's kind of really under current, or that's current management. Should we break down kind of who will be hooked up with which departments at this point, or is it too early for that? Well, I think it's uh, so far we have two people who have expressed interest. Cynthia and Jen. Uh, are you interested in interviewing some of the departments? I can if necessary, um, but if I think two people might be enough. We talked about three different departments. So I, um, I, I also um, personally feel like I would be happy to find out more about the city departments, but on the other hand, if Cynthia and Jim are managing that and they don't need any help, I'm fine with that to be on the sidelines. Uh, okay, so then, um, so then, uh, uh, Lisa, you, you said you were interested in the, the grants um, and costs.
find ourselves in an official subcommittee, then we went up to post our meetings online and that it's really tough to do. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The joy of the municipal government. <laughs> Some municipalities don't take the open meeting up quite as seriously as we do, so <laughs> when they get sued and they well, pay through the nose of the lawsuits, yeah. Um, just a recommendation, there's a Massachusetts Municipal Association. Is that a first call? You say, you know, They've been, I think it's a good idea to be in touch with them for sure, but my experience with the MMA is that they have not, um, they have not focused on this topic very much and they haven't done very much to kind of aggregate information. It's much more um, these, like the Toxics Action Center, which is a Massachusetts-based organization working to reduce toxins. That's okay. really looking at what the municipalities are doing. That doesn't mean that the MMA shouldn't be contacted, checked to see what they have. I mean, because the Board of Health has its own organization and they're very responsive. Just ask the question other than what's a health working place. And they would know. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it would be even just for political purposes to notify the MMA that we're working on this because you know, they really should be working on it, whether they are or not. So that's, a, that's actually a really good idea. I wonder if I, I'm happy to take on contacting the MMA myself just because as a counselor, they'll be more yeah. likely to kind of interact with me around it just to find out if they have any aggregated information or anything like that. And that's I could do the same for the work that's that's right. Right. I know this works. OK, so then yeah. state. state. In keeping with our open meeting law provisions, you would be reporting on that at our next meeting, mm -hmm. not communicating by email, correct? Mm -hmm. Unless you're just communicating with each other, right? Well, I guess you can let people know. You just can't discuss it, right, Jim? <laughs> um. Like we could inform each other. Like I, I found out this information, and I would present it. Contacted the Mass Association for Health. As long as there's no are you saying that you could that you could also include in your email what you found out? And this is what I found out, A, B, C, and D. You can't reply. You can't reply. For sure you can't reply. Yeah. And you should always write in you know, an abundance of caution, do not reply to this, or do not reply to all or something like that. And we will have a full discussion at our next meeting. That's correct, yeah. right? Uh, so my thoughts on this are that um, that there's maybe some one-time meetings that might occur. I mean, if, if people are doing research on, you know, what other municipalities are, you know, working on, you can say, hey, here's what I found from this other website. Here's a link. And then arrange to, you know, talk to Laura, post a meeting that you're going to come here and meet and discuss, you know, openly discuss what it was you found. And um, that, um, and, you know, it's not going to be an ongoing meeting. It's simply, you know, taking the time to gather the information and kind of digest together what it was you found out. You do your homework ahead of time, and then you're bringing it back to us as to, I, I know it's adding more steps. I don't, I don't think that falls under the open meeting model, because it's not, a, you're not, that group that would be meeting to discuss what you found is right. not a public body. But let's say you, you know, sometimes you're going to find something where, oh, this look, you know, I thought this would be informative. The other person re reads and says, no, nah, you know, that's not. You know, where do you have that discussion? You know, do you want to have it in this meeting or do you want to have it before coming to the full committee to present what it was you found? If it's yeah. only two of you, you could have that conversation outside of any public meeting. So maybe that's the appropriate answer, because to have, to announce that discussion between two or three of people on this committee is that that's not really an official open meeting. It's it's like adding a whole step. You'd have to go through all. Official. You'd have to publish it in advance, two days in advance. You'd have, you'd have to have all the open meeting law And it's not even a it's not even an official body that's that's having the meeting. It's just a couple of people who want to talk about what they found. So I don't. Well, it, it's just based on what I heard from, from Alan that 
he, he was basically advising us to avoid meeting even in groups of two to discuss matters because it start because then we are a subcommittee. We're almost acting as a subcommittee. So meaning that <laughs> I don't know, that's not true. Just think about like when we wrote the resolution, you and I could talk about it as much as we needed to. Right. Um, because well we didn't constitute a quorum. Right, that was the catch. And and two mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. talking to each other in this committee don't constitute a quorum either, as long as they're not officially a subcommittee. That's what Alan was saying. So yes, you could talk to one person about it, but you have to be really careful about serial communication that, that one of those two people doesn't then take it to the third person and say, this is what we're doing. Okay. Right. That's the most And then you could be deciding among the two of you what, what doesn't make okay. sense to bring right. back to the whole committee. Okay. All right. Good yeah, the approach we could consider is that you know, we have to think about who establishes the agenda. And so as the chair, we could just be telling you, these are the things we have, this is what we found out, and then you're constructing agenda based on that. And you know, you know in your mind, well Lisa did that already, so we need to do it. And so then we're presented with an agenda and we all know what what's going to happen. But then Adele can't be in a position of getting back to you about whether or not because that would constitute serial yeah, understood. communication. Understood. So she's the only one that can hold that information. Yeah. But she can't say to you, don't pursue that because Lisa's already pursued that. Right. Because yeah. that's yeah, it's but, but it's also not necessarily logistics isn't deliberation either. So yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah, you know, like yeah, like just saying no, don't work on that because at least he's working on that. That's not deliberation per se. Right. That's logistics. Uh, well, and couldn't you also, couldn't I, as the chair, just get a gathering bits of information say, you know, you guys want to talk to each other. I don't, I don't need to be part of the conversation, but you two need to talk to each other because you're working on something similar. And you need to decide what to bring back to the whole community. Well, it depends whether or not you deliberated with either one of us, because uh, then I it could be would be serial. into serial communication. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Anything, it's deliberation, it's not logistics. So anything that can be construed as deliberation, even if it's serial deliberation, All right, well, back back to our assignments. Um, so uh, we said that we were hoping that Kate was going to take on the effects of pesticide use, and we don't know what else she might be interested in. Um, Cynthia and I are going to work on other cities' policies. Cynthia and Jim are going to work on um, the city departments after we have gotten permission to talk to city departments. Elisa is going to focus on grants, costs, etc., statewide and national, working for national organizations. And we're going to have an So, um, I, I don't see it on the list here, but something I was hoping to do was there was a number of people who applied to be part of this committee and um, that um, also had some considerable expertise and that, um, that I was hoping we could figure out a way to set aside some time during our meetings for people to come in and provide some testimony. Um, and. Um, and that might actually be a way to, so for example, our next meeting is, uh, I'm anticipating we're gonna meet with the mayor, um, and but we're not gonna have an opportunity to hear from city departments at that meeting, but we could actually reach out to some of those people and ask them to come in and provide testimonies during that meeting. Um, so we can actually be effective at doing some of that outreach. So that was my thought. Um, one, of, one of the people who I'd like to hear from is um, uh, Richard Jasky, who is part of the Ag Commission. And uh, um, the Ag Commission um, oversees uh, uh, the leasing of farmland that's owned by the city. 
I, 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 I think it would be really interesting to hear what he, he has to say about farming practices in general and uh, farming on uh, city property. Uh, and there's a number of other people who I think would be interesting to hear from as well. Are you imagining them coming to um, a special public forum beyond our regular meetings or just inviting them to one of our meetings? What? I picture it just being one of our meetings, you know, we post them and if people want to come and hear what they have to say, you know, to be But inviting them specifically. Specifically and, you know, giving them, you know, 15 minutes on the agenda that, and, or maybe a little more, I don't know, a little time for question and answer, but to come in and present, you know, what it was that I'd, I'd like to hear, you know, I mean, people were interested in, um, uh, committing a great deal of time to this and I'd like to hear what was their concerns what interested them and um, I think um, I think it would uh, broaden our awareness of what's already been going on as well um, that we're going to hear from the city but to also to hear from people outside um, who are working with the city as to you know how um, they'd like some guidance where um, they think we need to work on it. So we're, uh, are you saying that we should note that in your mind it would be good to invite anyone who applied to be on this committee but was not selected to come address this committee about what their concerns are? I think if they're interested in providing testimony, uh -huh. that we, we should set aside some time. Uh, are you um, also suggesting that people other than ap applicants to this committee also be well, we we have public comment right now, yeah. and that um, that if people want to come in and present public comment, that's that's fine. We don't. Um, if there's somebody, at, uh, you know, let's say uh, the the, um, you know, the chair of Broadbrook wants to come in and speak to us, they I, I'm I'm fine with them requesting some time on our agenda to to speak to us, or if there's other. Organizations that um, have thoughts and opinions around this that the city has dealings with, I, I think it's fine for us to set aside some time for them. What I'm trying to clarify in my own mind is whether you're suggesting that at our next meeting, uh, how much time at our next meeting we set aside to hear from applicants, and you, you, you mentioned 15 minutes, possibly 15 minutes for one. Um, so, how many of those 15 minute slots we can want to fill at our next meeting? And do we want to spread that over a number of meetings and make a very inclusive list of people that we offer this opportunity to? Because our public comment, I'm, I would advise us to limit our public comment to two minutes each. Mm -hmm. um, that's not enough time for somebody to really give our testimony. So I would right. to offer more time to people who want to give us testimony. Right. But we can't do that all at the same meeting or we'll be here for a long time. I would like us to be a little bit more targeted and focused personally. I think I do think that we should have, if not, if we don't talk about it today because it's not on our agenda, maybe our next meeting, just to set aside some time about public outreach, um, to bring people to public comment, just in, in working on this and people knowing that I'm the person that initiated the city. I have gotten so many emails from community gardens, people, different organizations, and people want to talk about this. A woman who's really interested in us bringing goats to the city. You know, there, there, there's a lot of interest. So I do think we should think about how to do public outreach. But in terms of having people provide testimony that have expertise that aren't city staff, I think we should make a list of who we'd really like to hear from, see how long it is, figure out how much time we want to allot to different people figure out which of our meetings it makes most sense to bring them to. You know, if, if we decide to go topic, topic, like turf management as opposed to conservation land management. Um, Bernadette Giblin is someone who applied, who um, the, the, the city council president did not select to be on the committee, but we feel she has, Jim and I have talked about this, feel she has really deep expertise. When we talk about turf management, we could invite her to come and set aside 15 minutes. I don't think we should we should you know give out a blanket call to applicants saying you know we'll give you time for testimony. 
I do think we should pick out the people that we know have very particular expertise and figure out where it makes sense to invite them. And anyone can come and do public comment. And the only other thing I want to say while I have the floor is that um, it's pretty standard in our city that we do three minutes of public comment, not two, so I don't know if we would be willing to stretch that to three minutes <laughs> per person. Does the Board of Health also do three minutes? I think mm -hmm. I've heard yeah. I guess the question, oh well, yeah, the city council has three minutes, but then again, you guys meet till midnight. You know, it's like, you have no ending time, but our meetings, uh, so, well, today's meeting is, you know, 10 to noon. And, you know, we got our, I've got my parking here that's going to expire. <laughs> so, I, I don't want to assume that people can just stay for an unlimited amount of time. That's not really fair. So, if we have a time limit for our meetings, then I think we have to have a time limit. So I, I would I, I really like this discussion because I think there needs to be a component of and I'm just gonna call it outreach, public, whatever. Um, so how do we want to achieve that? And I think we really need to be proactive and do that. So there's a, there's the people who are managing you know, like the Richards and the chair of Broadbook, and there's also these other folks that kind of and so how do we Incorporate with a limited amount of time, the best way possible, to illustrate that we are seeking this and that we're tapping certain questions. I don't have an immediate answer to that, but I do think that I, I, I'm not sure the 15 minute presentation, that's going to, it's going to really eat up the same. You know, I'm just, not, I'm just wondering if these folks can just tell us what their perspective is in a short period of time. By invitation and also advertising this public comment. So I don't know if this is a broader discussion or something to think about for the next meeting. It's a great discussion for community engagement or outreach onto the agenda for the next meeting, and, and maybe uh, we should all be prepared to bring in kind of the names of people we know who have expertise, including those applicants. That that you might want to have invited for more than just public mm -hmm. comments. You guys know the applicants. I don't you know I don't know who they are. So okay, so we could have this a more full discussion at our next meeting. And we might we might have to have several opportunities of different types and different kinds of people and, and for the length of the whole five months too, it doesn't have to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that'll be an agenda item for our next meeting. Um, are you also suggesting that for the next meeting we come prepared with a list of people that we want to offer as what we should do out each do? Well, it, to do invites for the outreach. How do we invite people to come to public comment if they have the input? Okay, I, I, I guess what I'm stymied out is it sounds like we may very well have a list of people we want to invite to bring to give us testimony, which could include written material as well as a certain amount of time on our agenda. And then there are other people who we might say will come give three minutes of public comment, but there might be people who say, no, I want more than three minutes, and, and so are we then going to offer a third type of opportunity, which we might give public forum? Or um, a written. Or a written. Yeah. And I think that's up to the chair to decide whether or not. It's one of the hard parts of, of being the chair is determining where to slot something. That wasn't really mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well that, then we'll, we will talk about them in more depth in our next meeting. We have 15 minutes left. And I, I'm so sorry, but I do have to be in town. Oh, that's right. Yes. You have to be in town or in town? At, in, at 10 of 12. 10 of 12. So you have five more minutes. She has to leave at 10. We're in trouble. <laughs> I, I will not do that again. This is just something that came up. Okay, so um, before then, before you leave, um, do we?
we need to then talk about um, our, our vision for the final report. And that's the only thing left on this list of the next meetings. And our, yes, and our next meeting. So if we're inviting the mayor to our next meeting, we have to find out what the mayor's schedule is and whether he's willing to come to our next meeting before we can schedule it. But let's at least have a ballpark goal in mind. Does everybody have their calendars? Two weeks from today would be the, um, the 27th. Yeah, we should probably come up with like two or three possibilities so that we can give the mayor several choices, right? Yeah. Oh, um, um, are we um, are we in agreement among ourselves that Monday the twenty second would work for us? In the morning like this? Yep. Do we have any idea about the rats? Okay. So uh, July twenty second, ten to twelve, uh, the twenty third. Tuesday. Same time. Here is tentative, right? These are all options we would offer to the mayor, and for, maybe first we would find out from Kate whether she can come. And are we talking the whole day? Well, at the moment we're talking ten to twelve, um, but it would be helpful to know whether people are available at any other times during those that. That Monday and Tuesday are you uh, are um, available at any other hour later than noon. The problem is right now I can be flexible, but I'll start scheduling things soon. So it's right. you know like we have to find out from the mayor like really soon. Like if you call his office, say we need to know like within 24 hours so that our reserve the spaces. But I can do all time Monday to work Tuesday that first. Okay. You as well, and you as well. So we're saying any time on Tuesday? Yeah, or or Monday after uh, afternoon. In any so on Monday, I am available up until two thirty. Okay. So we're we're twelve to two. Okay. What about on Tuesday? Um, I right now, like Elisa, I can do any time. Wednesday's not a good day for me. Usually Mondays and Wednesdays are the days I have to be at work, but I can kind of do more flexible on Mondays. Okay. All right, so um, I will try to reach Kate. Have you sent me her email address? It's probably on the list. Right? Uh, so so I, I'm going to call the mayor's office. And maybe I'll just go stop by. Uh, and I'm going to get into to Kate uh, at these times, and hopefully we're going to get an answer. There's what if he's on vacation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And I'm leaving town on the, that later that week, uh, in the uh, for two weeks. So, like I said, remote participation, but that doesn't mean that you all can't. So what? Um, I'm down from July. 31st Should we consider next Monday in the morning? Just throw that additional 10 to 2 in there? I'll be up. I'll be up to the whole week, okay? Right. What about like Thursday or Friday that we can get done both of us? I'm done. Which? Uh, the 25th and 26th. Um, we're probably going to be on the 25th, but I think you know, we're kind of bringing the email to the other one. Okay. Um, if we have to do the 24th, I'll make the announcements at work. I'm not happy about that. 
about the 24th in the morning. And we're talking on the 24th in the morning? Or all the any time? Well, it just sounds like it's Tuesday, I won't be here, but I could call in. I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'm going to be on the gate, so. So you have to be here to share, and you have, well, yeah, and even if Kate's not here, you might have three people to do that. Yeah, so we could do that. Is that, is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So, so. What's, what are we looking at? This is Monday the 29th. Is that okay for you? All day or in the morning? Doesn't matter. So I'm going to write any time. Okay. So the any time means roughly 10 to 2 or, or 10 to 12 or 12 to 2. We can even start, I mean, is 8 o'clock or 8.30 or 9? Is that a possibility for people too? It's a possibility. It's just an uncivilized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I have some of that. I get up early, but I have a lot of things to do. Yeah, I guess I um, Okay, so do, then we also want to consider the 30th, Tuesday the 30th, just in case we're having trouble in the year minute. Okay, well, look, we're going to start there, and then if we need to go to a doodle poll for other possibilities, uh, you'll be hearing from me. So on the 29th, I mean, I, 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 I free up until 2.30. Okay. The 29th until 2.30. Yes. Well, I will work on that part, the um, mayor's schedule and Kate's schedule. And I will do a, I guess I, I have it. <clears throat> I guess I should have gotten more information about what it means to be the chair before I agreed to do this. But <laughs> in setting the agenda, I mean, my, my tendency for other, other meetings that I've chaired is to send around a draft agenda and to get feedback. Is there anything else you want to add? Is that okay in an open meeting, Laura? As long as so that's no reply all. No reply. Adele, I'd like to see this yeah. thing added. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'll circulate a draft agenda. Um, so, and you have to remember when you submit the agenda that it has to be 48 business yes. hours in yes. advance. Right. So, like, I have to think about that in terms of July 4th being in the mix there. Right. So make sure that it's, and, and it will go to Laura. Crutzler, L. Crutzler at NorthamptonMA.gov, and she'll post it. And yeah. she'll also reserve city council chambers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, if there's something I can do while we're on here. Oh, great. Um, just let me know. I'll just be like next week. So. Okay. I will. I will also. But it's not like I'm. I'm not going to be uh, yeah. around the world or anything. Yeah. Laura Kretzler is the City Council um, Administrative staff, Assistant. Administrative assistant. Okay. Uh, if you want to walk over after, I can take you into the city right. to that the super, 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 super. the mayor's office. It sounds like. um, can I? Can we just skip to ten really quick? So before city leaves, I can just tell yes. you guys about yes, yes. some of the yeah. resources. I, I've been collecting um, articles and reports and information for a long time on this topic and there's a thing called Wakelets. I don't know if people know the program yet, but it's one of those, it's kind of like a Google Docs program, but what's really cool is you can put anything into it and it's web-based and everyone can kind of contribute and pull from it. 
So I will be sending out, just so you know, a link to this wakelets that I've created about pesticide reduction so that it's a really good resource for all of us where we can put material. So I see just, so just look out for that as a, okay. um, something that Thank I you. send out. Okay. It's pretty intuitive. It's super simple. So That's super great. Simple. Yeah. Okay. The best tool I've found for sharing information easier than Google Docs. All right. Um, well, if we're going to go to over to City Hall, and we probably don't have the same problem with parking meters. Well, do you I have placards for the City Council meetings? <laughs> well, I don't. Yes. I need to do something about my car before we before I disappear into City Hall for a while. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. I apologize. This won't happen again. It's so we, late. I'd like to make to make a motion that we return. I second that. I'm all in favor. Aye. Yep. All in favor. Thank Aye. You. Aye.